I find that most people that have a problem with plastic surgery, people that want plastic surgery and can't afford it. Ooh! Oh, 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 that was no, wait, 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 wait. All right, welcome to another episode of Messy Medicine. We are four board certified doctors, and we're here to combat fake news with scientific and medical evidence. To my left, the lovely Dr. Barbara Joy Jones. To my right, Dr. Jocelyn Slaughter. And to my far right, my guy, Dr. Andrew Jimerson. And I'm Dr. Mark Jungil. All right, so let's get right to it. Uh, we're here to have fun, talk yes. uh, things, medicine, medicine. And, and everything in between. But today we're gonna to talk for the ladies, this is for you, and for the men, you mm -hmm. know, with BBL Drizzy out in the news, <laughs> right? We're gonna talk plastics because it's for both men and women. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna to talk to the expert in the house. What do you want me to call you, Dr. Curves or Dr. Jimerson? Go either way. All right, we're gonna go with Dr. Curves. Hey, hey, curves. Bring, bringing the curves back. All right, so, I, you know, everybody knows what plastic surgery is by this point, but tell me, what, what's new in plastics? Well, there's a lot of new things. First of all, plastic surgery, especially in the African American community, is new. I mean, uh, you know, when I first started, uh, like when I first graduated from residency in 2006, people weren't getting plastic surgery, especially the, the African American pa patients. And so basically from 2006 till now, it has just grown ex substantially. So the first thing I saw was the BBLs. So that's, that was what first became popularized. So once we had a procedure that kind of resonated with African-American women, then that's when the, the trend started. And, um, and then since then, now the women that have gotten the BBLs, they're looking for other stuff to get mm -hmm. done. And so, um, you know, they're starting to look towards their face. So uh, I think I see that in the next 10 years, there's gonna be a big push for uh, like African-American women or just ethnic women to get stuff done to their face, like facelifts, eyelid surgery, that kind of thing. And then the other big push is um, men. So, you know, we have a lot of men kind of flooding mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. slowly, you know, uh, and it's sort of tricky because I remember when I first started doing BBLs back in 2010, 11, uh, there was, you know, at first there was a lot of hate, you know, uh, because people were like, you know, kind of anti-plastic surgery. But then the men kind of stepped in and they, they were like, no, this is good. And so then after that, then it became accepted. So now the men are getting it. And some women are kind of like hating on the men getting it. But I think if we see women encouraging their men to get it, then I think it'll, it'll take off. What, what type of things are we seeing in men so I know what to look for? Are they like fake calves? Is it the, the washboard fake, calves? Fake calves. <laughs> well, there's calf <laughs> implants, right? I mean, I've seen that on the internet, like calf implants. Yeah. Shoulder implants. I mean, what Pectoralis. you tell me? I'm, like, I'm, I'm, what what type of procedure do I need to look for to? Okay, I mean, so there's different. Um, so, like for instance, men get um, liposuction. So men want weight loss, and then they want liposuction uh, because they they're tired of going on the beach and and like have you know putting their shirt on, not feeling comfortable taking their shirt. I mean, how many men above the age of fifty take their shirt off when you see them at the pool? Most of us have a shirt on, some type of water shirt or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so they're uncomfortable with that. Gynecomastia, so you know their chest, they wanna get that lipoed. Um, but they also don't want it to be flat. So we can take the fat and put it in their pecs and make, you know, make it so, kind of fill their pecs out. So now they have more of a muscular pec and then they have a thinner waist. And then, you know, then they kind of work out and then, um, then we can do abdominal etching. Mm -hmm. So abdominal etching is where Basically, there's differential liposuction. So there's like, we liposuction in different layers. So we have some more superficial liposuction in the areas where the inscriptions are to make, to kind of bring that out. But we, but we don't make fake abs. We just kind of highlight the abs that they have underneath. So if you have like a semi six pack that's coated in fat, you just kind of yeah. sculpt yes. it out a little bit better? Exactly. Okay, all so, right, so, I got you. So basically, everybody has a six pack. Yes. It's just hidden. Yes, mine you, is mine is hidden right now. You're, you're mine hidden. is too. So you're, just, you're just a magician. You're just unveiling because the, yes, the existing like, ah, six pack plus the is digitation. In there. Exactly, yes, in I got there. you. But we can also like put fat like in your pec. I mean, in your not only your pecs, but your, we can put them in your biceps, 
your deltoids. I mean, we can really kind of build you out into a youthful look. And, um, and then also, you know, face stuff. So men want to, you know, get rid of the, the turkey neck. They want their eyelids okay, done. So let's, let's talk about that. Because when you tell me this, like a facelift, I just imagine, well, let me just go back a little bit. I do get patients with tummy tucks. Now, yeah. they do have scars. A lot of them will cover them up with these, you know, waistline tattoos now. Uh -huh. But they do get scars. And so when you tell me facelift, I'm just thinking in my head, man, what are you doing? Like, are you, like, clipping the excess skin? <laughs> are you, like, suturing? St just tell me, because I have no idea. Yeah. So tell me what it's like, and, and, you know, explain it to the audience in the simplest terms possible. And then tell us what a recovery period looks like. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm just imagining all this swelling has to go down at some point. So just tell me what it's like. Okay, so basically with the facelift, um, you know, there's different types of facelifts. There's mini facelifts, there's full facelifts, there's neck lifts, depending on what you need. So, but a facelift, the main goal of a facelift is there's a jowl here, mm -hmm. and there's to pull that jowl up, you know, because as, as gravity pulls down as you age, you get this jowl right here, this line. Mm -hmm. And so we pull that up. So that's, that's what a facelift is. The neck lift takes care of the skin here. So we make an incision here behind the ear, okay? And then we pull the skin up that way. And then for the jowl, we pull the skin up here. Mm -hmm. And then you have the mid face, which is here. And so you can carry the incision all the way up here and pull this up too. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is not typically done with just a regular facelift, but you, know, you can pull that up or you can do threads. Sometimes people do threads for that. And so that's what it is. So you have an incision kind of around here and then it comes back here and around here. The recovery? I have, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get messy real quick, but you, you go ahead and finish, but I just wanna make sure I have a messy question. Right. Okay, okay. I'm about to get messy. No, so go, get, go on, get messy. No, no, you get, I'm gonna let you finish that last part, because it's, 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 it's about to get real messy. <laughs> All right, okay. I, I saw your face, I, mm -hmm. I could tell. I have, I have a question too, nah, but go ahead. This, this, I'm gonna follow up her messiness. This is about to destroy this whole more, conversation, more but go ahead. Go ahead. So, okay, the recovery, so you can do, you know, like when I first came, down, I started doing facelifts under local anesthesia. And, um, you know, so they were awake. Now, but it's more comfortable when they're done under like some conscious sedation. Um, but, you know, they take about an hour to do, an hour to four hours, depending on what you're doing and stuff. And um, usually, like the first two weeks, they have to wear a head wrap. Um, but they can go out in public if they feel comfortable going with that head wrap. And they can go back to work in two weeks. And then two weeks, uh, they have to wear the wrap at night. Mm -hmm. So it's not that much swelling. Okay, so the recovery you're saying is, is pretty... As long great. as you're okay with having some black and blue, you know, for the first two weeks. Okay, I, I think a lot of people would be comfortable with that if it makes them look youthful. Go ahead, <laughs> Jocelyn, what's your messy... Okay, just so messy. Let's, this, is, this, this has been real cute, this conversation has been real cute. But let's talk about plastic surgery and this face surgery. Just to start, to start here. So I hear a lot about people changing things about their face yes and a lot of it not the facelift part but a lot of some of the things people are changing about their face especially with their nose and their eyes are to make them look more european i know i know this is we're, we're going a different way here but i do see a lot of ethnic nose changes mm -hmm. okay but and even i mean we have you know joy you i'm sure in the some of the a uh, Oriental Asian communities yes. that this eyelid is surgery. a thing yeah. about eyelid surgery um, in the black community and African community, people trying to make their noses more narrow. And but then it's weird because then there are people trying to make their lips bigger and people trying to make their butts bigger to make them look more. And so so from your plastic surgery community and from your just your whole thing, this is just weird to me that you've got people trying to, you know, make their face, I mean, like, how do you reconcile that when you've got a person that's like, I want my nose to look more narrow, mm -hmm. but then, but I want my butt to look bigger, but I want my lips to look bigger, but, but I want, a more. I mean, like, just, I mean, like, let's, I, let's I talk think, about that. I think what, I think, I, I see where you're you going, where with, I'm going this. with this. Yeah, so, like, historically speaking, yeah. right, when you thought about a, a juicy booty, a dog, <laughs> a dunk, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> you thought of a black woman, right? Yes. Historically, <laughs> historically, historically, now, historically. Now it's like, you know, anybody could get it. Um, and then when you thought about like a, a skinny nose or whatever, you think of a, a white person, yeah. right? 
And if you think of, uh, you know, chinky eyes, you think of an Asian person and, and full lips, uh, you know, Hispanic or black woman, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, are you seeing a lot of people, you know, let's say, say black women trying to get their noses thinner and white women trying to make their butts bigger and their their no uh, their lips fuller. Like what are you seeing or is it just all over? The but but also but to to your I mean like your community. I mean like like what what do you see also? Like is that something that in almost it's in almost like every ethnic community there's elements where people are trying to look more European. But, but what facial you, features. Go ahead. You have the clientele, you tell you tell us sir. Okay, so I think that there is some myths out there about that. Now, I, I will say this. I think that, um, like, back in the day, like I would say back in the 90s, okay. there was very, very few ethnic plastic surgeons in America. You mean, what do you mean by ethnic plastic surgeons? Black, Latino. Like, okay, people that were of color so it was just that were plastic white, surgeons. white yeah. plastic surgeons. Okay. And so what happened is that was what they knew. That was their world, you know? So when black people would try to get surgery, you know, all the books, like all the all of the training material has been geared towards how to make someone look European. Okay. Mm -hmm. And well, even okay. when I okay. even okay. when I was training, because there, I mean when I was training you could count the number of black plastic surgeons on probably two hands. Mm. So I learned how to basically make people look European. I mean from liposuction, they didn't teach us how to make big butts. They didn't they, mm. they taught us how to give like big breasts or you know, breast, and then basically like shave off all the shape and mm. make people look flat. Mm. Okay, that's how they taught us. That that was the instruction. Well, it was just yeah, it was yeah. just that that was the the books that mm -hmm. that was who was, that was teaching the ideal us. Body that type. was all of our attendings, mm -hmm. you know, and so um, that's why I named myself Dr. Curtis because basically mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I don't subscribe to that that look. I mean, I can make that look. I was taught how to do that look, but I I I and other uh, black plastic surgeons, Latino plastic surgeons, ethnic plastic surgeons, we started to come into it and we changed the face of plastic surgery. And so now I don't mm -hmm. get a lot of black women or Latino women or whatever that want to look European. Mm -hmm. They want to look like a better version of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah was, there you go. Hold on, hold on, where's it real? Uh, yeah, he kept it real. That boy, kept real. Hey, that boy kept good. That boy good. That boy good. That boy good. That boy good. <laughs> Turn that all around. He said, let me turn this yeah. out. And actually, I find that... All the ladies are loving you right now. <laughs> all right. Well, more, more, yes, give it yes, up yes, for yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Yes. Dr. Kerns. All right, come on. Now, I mean, I do find that a lot of other ethnicities mm. try to push towards more of the African-American mm -hmm. look. But, um, it, so it's kind of a changing trend. But now is more ethnic blending. I think that, mm. you know, different ethnicities have, like, some desirable like feature or features. desirable features and uh -huh. people want to emulate that and I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Everybody needs to just live in their own truth. And if you like something, you like it. it. And you're if you're paying for it, then pay for it. Like okay. who I you know, I don't like people body shaming people, mm -hmm. you know, body shaping men, body shaming people like I find that most people that have a problem with plastic surgery are people that want plastic surgery and can't afford it. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's no, that's wait, wait. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Here, I'll let you hold it. Oh. You can hold that one. Oh. Hey, bro. Because right, you right. broke. Uh, with your wait, broke wait. ass. With your broke ass. <laughs> All right, come on. Hating. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We know. You hating from outside the club. Yeah, right. right. You can't get inside the club. I mean, they'll follow a plastic surgery page like mine, right? And they'll just be trash. They'll trash people on Trolling. the page. It's like, mm -hmm. why are you on my page? Right, right, right. You know, the, you're supposed to be in inspirational and you know and helping these ladies through there they're showing their results they don't have to they're trying to help and you know and then they're getting trash that's really vulnerable for your patients yeah. um, uh -huh. to be on your page in yes. front of almost a million people mm -hmm. showcasing the before and after that takes a lot of guts and, and even so, putting their face on there you know right right yeah not even blow it out yeah and like so most people are encouraging but the you know the one the trolls the those people there's always trolls though that's mm -hmm. that's the age we're in I'm gonna get a little messy. <laughs> Wait, not, okay. I know so, messy. I am on Instagram like all of y'all are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, more and more you're just seeing more nice butts out there. And they're in the gym, they working out, but you know, my. You can't even go to the gym anymore. Right. My spider senses says this was not all in the gym or genetics. So, my question to you is 
if you were to guess now with the you know, advances in uh, BBLs, what percentage, Dr. Curves, mm. of booties being shown on the gram are real or fake? Um, I would say 95% of them. Ooh. No, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> These girls got money. <laughs> Oh, or know somebody with some money. Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not trying to blow up anybody's spot, but listen, these these ladies, you know, on Medicaid, they will get some. Oh, I mean, oh man, those they, are my they, biggest clients. They, they will want to not pay yeah. me for a primary yeah. care yeah. visit they'll, they'll, annual, they'll, but they, they but they they'll find some yeah. money for their right. <laughs> I would say on on the gram, if you're going to show your behind, eighty five percent of them mm. are okay. either have some type of BBL type procedure or they have, or some type of photo edited BBL. Got it. Now, yeah. what, now how, because also there's a lot of young girls, so tell me, age, are you seeing a trend in how early uh, people are getting plastic? Because I could tell you from some Southern Latino countries, I mean, they, they I've had patients that had breast implants age 17, yeah. 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are you seeing now? Are, are people coming in at an earlier age, young women, young men? Tell and, us. And, what, and what's your minimum age where you're like, you got to be this old that I'm going to get Okay, something. so my minimum age is 18. Okay. 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 And I think that's a universal thing for plastic okay. surgery. Mm -hmm. um, unless there's certain procedures where we'll do it earlier, but for the most part, you need to be an adult. Right. Uh, now, yes, people, well, the thing is, BBLs, it depends on where you go and like how much you want to spend. But yeah, I mean, I do see an earlier trend in general of people getting BBLs at a younger age. Um, and I think that's great. I mean, it, it, you're right, in the Latino countries, like down in the, like... Colombia. Yeah, Colombia. Mm -hmm. Venezuela. I mean, it's like, <laughs> they're getting it like... I know. And so I, I find that we're starting to do that too. Right. You know? And so the I, question, what is the upkeep though? If I get this at 18, mm -hmm. you know, like one of the... Um, Jenner's <laughs> like mm -hmm. if you start at 18 what is the upkeep is it every five years every 10 years every whatever because there has to be upkeep right. what you did at 18 ain't gonna hold up at 72. The thing about it is there really is just living healthy because once the fat is where it is and the fat is removed from like if the fat's removed from your stomach there's only so many fat cells you're gonna get mm -hmm. so, I mean now they can grow exponentially mm -hmm. so if you get those fat cells removed those are gone permanently and the fat that is in your butt or Penis or hands no, wait, or wait, face? Wait, wait, what? what? <laughs> penis. So BB. What you call it? A BBP? No, yeah. Wait, no, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. BBP? Wait. <laughs> wait, no, wait, no, wait. BP. It's not a Brazilian. It's not Brazilian. Anymore. It's uh, American. So AP. What are we Adipose about? tissue transposition into the penis? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I okay. call it the egg, eggplant uh, makeover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we even have to watch that. Wait, wait, we didn't lead with let, that. Let, let, let's let's we're gonna put a pin in that. Okay. All right? That okay. that I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. When you said that 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 stunned me, and I'm I'm off track now. Right. Where, 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 where He's a grower talking? and a shower. Right. After I'm you, done. I'm done. So we, I'm we done. were this talking about ages. <laughs> All right. Let's on grower track, people. And a shower. We'll get we'll put a pin in it. But back to the ages, yeah. right? So yes, young. Now, on the opposite yes, side of the, the spectrum, older. are we seeing more older patients? Because yeah. I, I had a 60-year-old, yes. like she had a BBL tummy tuck, and I was like, mm. well, damn. She... So here, here's what it is. is. Basically, the women that are about my age, okay, they're the kind of the trendsetters. They're the ones that started. So we're talking 40s and 50s, like for, I would say like maybe 35 to 55, that range mm -hmm. of women were the ones that kind of like started getting the surgeries. So now their moms are seeing how great their daughters are looking, and so their moms are coming in. So we have people in their 60s, you know, even 70s coming in for different procedures. And then, so that's how it's working. So it's like it started with the women in that range. The men in that range are also getting older, and so they're coming in. And then their moms are coming in, especially. Older men. I'm saying, well, the men about are about 50 okay, are coming got it, in, got it. and then right now the the older women are coming in, and I assume you know. When you say older, give an age range, age range like like older. I would say up to 70. Wow. So Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So would you do a BBL <laughs> on a 70 year old woman? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Let's keep going. 
would you do a BBL on a 75-year-old woman? If yeah. she was in good, okay, yeah, keep going. 80. Listen, for me, it's not about age. I don't, I'm not a, what do you call those ageist. people? That, I'm not an ageist. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I, if you're healthy you're and healthy. you want it, let's do it. Now, if you're okay. 50 and you have all this it, Yeah, if you're, if you're 30 failure, and you have all this problem, you, I'm not going to do you. Do you do them on people that are on blood thinners? No. So if you're on any, because that's the thing, because some people are on Eloquist, Eloquist and Zerelto. Zerelto. No, so that's a contraindication. For it, that they have to be off for... I, I, you know, I, if, what, why are they on blood thinner? Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's not really, I mean, I have to look at the whole picture and I individualize it to everybody. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there, obviously there's some contraindications. That's why you send to me for surgical exactly. optimization. You exactly. don't even think about it. Yeah. You make yeah. me make the decision. I make decision. everybody go get like <laughs> a medical clearance that's independent of mine. Mm -hmm. And they have to go to all kinds of specialists if, depending right. on what they have. Right. All right, so let's, let's go over it. So let me just ask still today, um, if what is the number one requested surgery today? BBL. BBL. For awesome. me. Okay. Um, I mean, the BBL is almost like fries. It's like I'm gonna get a Big Mac and fries. I'm gonna get this and fries. I'm gonna get a breast and fries. I'm gonna get a face of. Okay. It's like BBL is the cornerstone, but that's because that's what I'm known for. Right. Okay. It's um, fat grafting. Um. So would you suggest people go to, as a jet? You don't consider yourself a generalist as far as plastic surgery. So if somebody does want to get a facelift, shouldn't they go to somebody who does facelifts? and that's their jam, or go to somebody who does ethnic rhinoplasty and that's their jam? It, it so, so, okay, so th that's a good question. Uh -huh. So basically there's two types of plastic surgeons, okay? <laughs> there is the reconstructive plastic surgeons and then there's the cosmetic surgeons. And so for me, that's the breakdown. It's like if, if, you, if you do 80% reconstructive, Eh, your cosmetic surgery, because you're, you're, everything you're thinking is going to be more reconstructive. So let's, for the audience, quickly just tell them what yeah. The difference between cosmetic and yeah. reconstructive. So cosmetic surgery is about making things beautiful, okay? I mean, reconstructive is too, but that's not really, the, the reconstructive is like breast cancer, reconstruction after okay. breast cancer. I mean, you still mm -hmm. want to make the breast look good, mm -hmm. but it's not your, you know, or like, let's say someone has, I mean, plastic surgery is so wide. Like, let's say someone has big cancer on their face mm -hmm. and they have to cut it out, the bone, we have to go put the bone in there, we got to rotate the pec muscle up. I mean, uh, you know, if someone has a big bed sore, you know, this non-healing, you got to go debride that, push it together, like push the buttock tissue together. You know, if someone has some pelvic exoneration and you go in there and clean everything out and and like cut out half the, the back tissue. So we have to go and rotate. So there's a lot of flaps and a lot of like moving things around. If you have a burn, mm -hmm. you know, we, so, I mean, we do a lot of, there's a lot of different things. Cosmetic surgery is a very small part. Uh, I mean, like cleft lip and palate, we do yeah. that kind of stuff. So cosmetic surgery is a very, very small part of plastic surgery. Got it. Very small, you know. But then there are people that just specialize in cosmetic surgery. And for those people, um, there are people that kind of specialize in certain things, mm -hmm. but in general, if you're in cosmetic surgery, you know, when we take our certification exams, we, we, are, we have to keep up on all of the cosmetic surgery. Okay. So it's like, you know, you and say, hey, do you just go to someone that does hysterectomies? No, I mean, because you, you have multiple procedures that you're good at mm -hmm. in your thing. You understand? Mm -hmm. Got it. So it's, Was that it's, too long? No, 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 it's perfect. So the, the cosmetic part, if he's a cosmetic specialist, then he could pretty they much do, do it all. It. But I will say this, like rhinoplasty and BBLs are kind of, like if, you, if, if I was gonna get a rhinoplasty, I would go to someone that did a lot of rhinoplasties. I wouldn't go to a rhinoplasty doctor and get a BBL. Like I would, if, because those are two real kind of- Niches. Niches mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the cosmetic realm. Everything else, tummy tucks, breath, I mean all that stuff we do. All right, so let's run it down real quick. Um, BBL, What's the recovery look like and how long? Because I've always heard they can't sit on it or right. whatever. Just enlighten us. So for me, um, I don't let them sit on their butt for three months. Oh. What? Where do they how? sit? How, how does that work? work? Where do they go? I knew you were going to say something. Basically, um, the f you got to remember, when I put the fat in there, Okay, it's like the fat move from Ohio to Atlanta. It's not, it's, they don't, it's not connected to anything. Yeah. It's just in there, you know? It's not, it's not it's like, where am I at? It's in shock, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it has to grow blood supply. 
you know? And so, and then it gets integrated into the butt and then now it's home. So that's how I explain it. So, so basically if you sit on your butt too early or you sm some smoking around you or anything that disrupts that blood supply process, growing those blood vessels in, then you're gonna lose that fat. Mm -hmm. And so I have people sit on what we call a curve cushion and basically they're sitting on their posterior thighs. Got it. So okay. it's, like a, it's like a square pillow. They sit on their posterior thighs and their butt kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see them sitting on it. Wow. They don't even want to sit on it because it's like, yeah, you, it even if you're sitting now, you know, you're like killing fat cells and stuff. I mean, so it's like, you know, apoptosis and all that stuff. So that, so basically. So um, they can sit, but they have to sit on a special pillow. Yes, just don't but after pressure. two weeks. So I first, the first two weeks, I don't want them to sit on anything. I don't even roll them. When we, when, we, when we get done with the surgery, I just keep them on their stomach. I don't want them to sit or well, how, smash how, my work. How, how do they go home? The, I mean, it's like a cake. You know, you, you put the whipped cream on, you put all the, the icing stuff. Uh -huh. Then you would, I mean, would you go and then? No, <laughs> like, you wouldn't. <laughs> you, hey, how are you transporting it? Like, the, where are you Jocelyn, going? Jocelyn, that is the price of beauty. You get, <laughs> you get a BBS, you want to stand up you or lay on your stomach? You're going to stand up, kneel, or lay on your stomach. Wait, 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 well, wait. But see, hold on. I'm, I'm a logistics person. I, I need to know. It's going to be tough, <laughs> but it, it's going to be worth it in the end. But what about like when they man see it and they're like, oh yeah, girl, that looks good. Uh, How soon <laughs> can they get busy with it? Mm -hmm. They can get busy with it eight weeks. And, ooh, that's tough, man. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. after babies anyway. Right. Exactly. They could probably get, but I don't want them going in there smashing my oh. work. <laughs> yeah. <you can. laughs> like, why is this side a little flatter than that right. side? And I'm like, right. dude, I mean, I told you. you know? So basically, I started off doing vaginal rejuvenation. Okay. So ladies, you can get your, your labia, you know, after um, autumn kids and it's, you know. We don't agree on that, but go ahead. Go ahead. You can make it beautiful. Yeah, because the thing is, I was finding that women, when they got their BBL, okay, so the tummy, everything looked 30, 20, but the vaginal area looked 50, mm -hmm. you know, so it was like, it was a mismatch. It was like having a big butt and small legs. It was like, you gotta, right. you gotta do everything. So the same thing with the guy. I was like, you know what? I'm putting fat in the labia majora. You know, I was making it look 18 again. They were very, they're very happy. But I'm like, okay, now I got to do something for the guys. Mm -hmm. So I started putting fat in the penis. It doesn't give it length, yeah. but it gives yeah. it girth. And the, the thing is, with when I talk to most women, that's what they care about the most. I mean, unless I mean, if you're within a certain range lengthwise. But sometimes if it's a little too skinny. Like you, a pencil? Yeah, I have okay. the pencil thing. So yeah, I'm just I, I try to, I, I'm trying to liberate pencil those penis. men. You know, <laughs> he's helping the men out too. Okay. Yeah. But just, I mean, I'm just thinking it, it's fat. It's going to be soft. It's not yeah. firm. Wouldn't like, it like weigh it, it down like more? Wouldn't it like squish it? Like, no, it, first, it, no. You would think so. Number one, women don't care because it's all about the mass going inside. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the girth, the... The, the, the heft? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so she can't say, oh, it's, it's just it's a slide. I mean, you guys know more about this than yes. me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't want it feeling like a, a yeah, hot dog like, thrown down a hallway. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's not a hallway. They don't want it hitting the surface. They just they want the, the fullness <laughs> coming in and out. Like, so um, I mean that's my take. I'm not OBGYN, but so, so I'm, I'm trying to give them that girth. So you, but no, you do a, a circumferential fat transfer. Exactly. Okay. All right. Are they pleased? Yes. Does the wife come in pleased? Yeah, the wife okay, or the okay. girlfriend comes in pleased. I mean. All right. What's you know, the age range of men who actually want this? This is an older men thing. No, it's like 40s. 30s, is it, it's the same crowd of people that have always wanted a BBL. The women is that same crowd. Is there is there is there men? So I guess my I know we're running up. So this these are men who they feel like their penises have shrunk, or they just always felt like their penises could have been better before. Honestly, the men that come in, they're they're not small. I mean, they're not, they're they're normal sized penises. You know what I mean? But I mean, you know, they're watching porn too much. Stop <laughs> they're watching, watching too porn. much porn yeah. or whatever. But, I mean, it's unrealistic, <laughs> and the women don't like it. And, and you know, say, they're, say they're going to the locker on. room. That some men are like, you so know, y'all I mean, looking at other men's. I mean, not in intentionally, but the, I mean, there are guys that just walk around the locker. It's like, dude, it's just us here. Can you please put some underwear on? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no ditty. <laughs> All right, all right, stop. All right, all that's, right. That's it. We're gonna stop right there. So, man, you could you could enhance your. Uh, Genitalia, women. There's, there's, you know, watch this video. There's, there's uh, plenty of options for y'all out there. And again, the men. 
And again, we thank Dr. Kerr for his expertise. Yeah, we hate you up. So yeah, you did. You guys, you guys worked me out the first time. <laughs> you did good. You, that boy good. That boy good. All right, so that's our episode. Listen, uh, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask and follow all of us on social media. We'll get back to you and we're going to keep it going. All right, till next time. Yay.